number eight, Alien Mummy Found in a Cave in Peru. Peru has been made famous by its intricate Nazca lines that depict animals and elaborate shapes, but could a recent discovery give clues about who or what made these iconic lines? Recently, a local villager was traveling across the Nazca Plateau when he came across a mysterious cave. Even though he'd been exploring the area and its inhospitable mountains for years, he had only read about the caves. When he finally discovered the hidden entrance, he realized he had stumbled across something that had ties to the region's ancient civilization. Carefully making his way inside down claustrophobic tunnels into a spacious hall, the man soon realized this was no ordinary cave. It was a tomb. And inside, there were two sarcophagi, one that was filled with various priceless objects, but it was the second sarcophagus that shocked the man. Inside, he found two medium-sized mummies and a number of small humanoid mummies. Only a few blurry photographs of the humanoids exist, maybe because the man who found them was so worried that the Peruvian government would find the location of the cave and remove both the sensational beings and their sarcophagi. The photos that do exist show one of the humanoid creatures dressed in golden body armor and gold bracelets. Another had been laid on the ground on top of some sort of white powder. Whatever the creatures are and wherever the beings are from, is it possible they are the ones who created the infamous Nazca lines? Was it to show their kind where they were located or to share their knowledge of the flora and fauna of Peru? Unless the unnamed villager shares more of his knowledge of what it is he found, no one will ever know for sure what mysteries remain in this controversial potential discovery perhaps made inside the Peruvian cave. Number 7. First Mercury Poisoning Call it a cold case of the oldest kind, European researchers studying a set of 5,000-year-old bones have discovered what they believe is the first case of mercury poisoning. While working with bones unearthed from 23 different archaeological sites across Spain and Portugal, researchers found that many of the bones had unusually high levels of mercury poisoning, levels they say could not have come from one's diet alone. So what does that mean? Were these ancient people poisoned? After the analysis was complete, scientists shared their results. The bones had mercury levels of up to 400 parts per million. The normal rate found in remains of this type would ordinarily be around 1 or 2 parts per million. And the culprit, according to experts, was something known as the mineral cinnabar. Cinnabar is a toxic mercury sulfide that can be ground into a fine powder that was once used to make paint pigments. One of the largest cinnabar mines just happens to be in Spain, where some of these bones were discovered. The highest levels of cinnabar were found in bones that dated back to around between 2900 BC and 2300 BC, which was the late Neolithic to the Middle Copper Age. During this time, cinnabar was considered a rare substance that was traded and used in ritual practices. It was also used to paint tombs, to decorate figurines, and even deliberately spread over the dead to consecrate them. So whether it was in their daily lives or during ritualistic ceremonies, the people of Spain and Portugal inhaled or consumed large amounts of cinnabar, something that has remained with them even after death. Number 6. Killer Algae over the last 540 million years, there have been five mass extinction events that killed off from 50 to 90% of animal species, with asteroids or volcanic eruptions taking a blame. Now, a new study shows that something much smaller may have played a role in these events, something that still lurks underfoot. A primitive type of algae has been studied by researchers, and now they think the plant life may have had a hand in at least one of these mass extinctions. But how could something as small as algae be to blame for killing off countless animals? Even though algae are a simple organism that gets nourishment from the sun, they could also produce harmful toxins. And one particular group of algae called dinoflagellates can release a type of neurotoxin that attacks nerve cells. When there is an abundance of nutrients in the water, algae are known to grow rapidly. These algae blooms can have a huge impact on the local ecosystem. 
just think about what a massive explosion of toxic algae would have been able to do to the ancient fish, birds, marine mammals, and people. But it takes more than just a simple algae bloom to kill, even a large one. Stresses including a change in the salinity of the water, and even changes in temperature, can make the toxins stronger when they're released. So it makes sense that during a time of upheaval in the planet's atmosphere, these toxins may have exploded, ultimately harming the plant and animal life. Even though some scientists are skeptical that simple algae could have caused a mass extinction, they do agree that the inhospitable environment caused by toxic algae could have been one of many contributing factors to these catastrophic events. Number 5. Ancient Stone Tools in the mountains of central Mexico, controversy is unfolding with the discovery of hundreds of ancient stone tools whose presence could change the timeline of human evolution. They were discovered in the Chiquihuita Cave in the Estillero Mountains and could prove that humans arrived in North America around 15,000 years earlier than previously thought. Almost 2,000 stone tools were uncovered, 239 of which were embedded in layers of gravel, which archaeologists carbon dated to determine that the gravel was between 25,000 and 32,000 years old. But the site was a large one, and with not that many of these old tools found there, research think that the site was only an occasional stopover for ancient humans. During the last ice age, some 26,000 years ago, intense blizzards would have made travel treacherous for early humans looking to move through North America. The Chiquihuita Cave would have been a welcome refuge for those looking for shelter. There is still some controversy surrounding the tools, though. Some experts think burrowing animals or geological activity could have shifted the tools deeper, making them seem older than they truly are. Others think these activities may have chipped away the edges of some of the stones, making them look like tools chiseled by the hands of ancient humans. But for the objects that had become embedded in an impenetrable layer of mud formed during the last ice age, those tools really are tens of thousands of years old. It's going to take more in-depth study to figure out if humans spread across North America earlier than most historians believe, but if these tools have anything to say about it, their discovery completely rewrites the timeline of early human presence in the Americas. Do you think it's possible that the tools discovered shifted lower into the Earth somehow? Or were humans in North America far earlier than we imagined? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 4. The Tong Child is it possible that the missing link between humans and apes was discovered back in 1925 in a limestone quarry in South Africa? One man thinks so, but his discovery still has paleontologists arguing over whether or not his theory is correct. Raymond Dart was an anatomist at the University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg. Over the course of 73 days, Dart worked to remove the hard rock surrounding a fossil that was brought to him from the limestone stone quarry. As he did, he realized he had something remarkable. The skull of an ape-like being that he believed was the missing link between primates and humans, now known as Australopithecus africanus. Excited about his find, Dart sent photographs and details of the fossilized skull to Nature, a well-respected scientific journal published since the late 1800s in England. Then a journalist with an affinity for fossils came asking questions. Initially, Dart was careful about sharing it with the world, but after the journalist promised to hold off on his story, Dart couldn't resist and he shared a copy of his paper on the skull as well as the photographs he'd taken of his incredible discovery. But the story never surfaced in nature, and when Dart contacted them to find out why, he found his discovery was considered so unprecedented that they had sent Dart's findings to other experts for review. The article was eventually published, but the details of the fossil were debated between scientists. Some thought the fossil might have belonged to an immature ape and not a human. 
They also felt that the features were so similar to immature gorillas and chimpanzees that Australopithecus should be placed in the same group. One reason experts were initially skeptical was because they wanted to know more about the conditions where the fossil was found. They also needed to examine the teeth more closely to get a better picture of its origin. Another reason they were skeptical was that the skull showed that Australopithecus stood upright long before they had large brains. Up until the discovery, scientists thought that the brains of hominins expanded first, long before they evolved to walk upright on two feet instead of all four limbs. It would take decades for the truth about Australopithecus to be clarified, and after much study, Australopithecus was finally recognized as a hominin, with Dart's discovery of the small skull becoming a very important missing link in the progression of ancestors to modern humans. Number 3 Oldest Burial in Africa The Panga Yasaidi Cave in Africa is a stunning sight with massive towering cliffs, but a discovery at the mouth of the cave is even more fascinating. A burial that has given archaeologists a glimpse into the social behaviors of early Homo sapiens. The buried remains of a 2.5 to 3 year old child in the cave located on the Kenyan coast is one of the earliest signs of modern human behavior. Initially, archaeologists only found a few portions of the child's bones in 2013. It would take almost five years to unearth the small pit where the child was buried. The pit had been dug about almost 10 feet below the surface, but researchers weren't sure what they'd found until much later. Using plaster to stabilize the remains, experts took the bones back to a lab where they were analyzed. There, they discovered two teeth, which they later realized belonged to a 2.5 to 3-year-old human child. But that was only the first in a number of intriguing finds. Further exploration led experts to parts of the child's skull and face, with more teeth still in place. They also found the spine and ribs still remarkably well-preserved, meaning the body had been undisturbed for thousands of years before being discovered. The soil around the body showed that the child had been buried shortly after dying and that he was lying left on one side. The position of his head also showed that at one time, a type of pillow had been under his head. All these details show that he had been covered in a shroud in some sort of ancient funerary rite. The fact that the child had been buried 78,000 years ago made it the oldest known human burial in Africa. Stone tools buried at the same level indicate that Homo sapiens and Neanderthals both treated their dead with honor in this way. Early evidence of burials are rare in Africa, meaning experts don't know much about how early people interacted with the dead, but this one discovery gave them a new perspective on how early humans may have started modern burial rituals we're familiar with today. Number 2. Horned Giants in 1916, an announcement in the New York Times set off a firestorm of controversy. The report claimed that two professors and a reverend had uncovered a horned skull in a burial mound in Pennsylvania. But the strange skull wasn't the only thing in the burial mound on the Murray farm. The remains of 68 men were also located, supposedly buried around 1200 AD. Locating the burial mound was an exciting find, but the remains were something that no one had ever seen before, with each of the bodies stretching more than seven feet tall. The newspaper article claimed that large stone kilts, which are polished New Stone Age axes, were also found in the pit. More stunning was the reveal that the skulls had strange protuberances on their foreheads. Is it possible the bones belong to ancient giants? If so, what were they doing in the middle of a field in Pennsylvania. This wasn't the first time a supposed giant was found in the state. In 1822, an eight-foot-tall Native American skeleton was found in Tawanda, Pennsylvania. As time went on, the story of the discovery on Murray Farm became legend, with tales that giants roamed the land before modern humans. 
but all it took was a little more digging to discover the truth behind the claims. While the bodies were first being excavated, one of the men found a bundle containing deer antlers that just happened to be above one of the skeleton's heads. Someone decided to play a joke by claiming the horns had at one time been attached to the skull. As for their height, the skeletons ended up being only about six feet, which may have seemed somewhat gigantic to Europeans who were mostly around five foot six. So even though the story about giants in America might have been a series of miscommunications, excitement, or just the result of a prank, the discovery of the Stone Age axes still gave archaeologists something they could marvel over, even if they were never wielded by horned giants. Number 1. Lost City of Honduras what would make archaeologists angry about the discovery of an ancient lost city? And what does it have to do with the National Geographic Society? Leaders in both scientific exploration and education, the organization is known all over the world for their celebration and protection of wildlife, oceans, and ancient heritage. But when they published a story about an ancient lost city in Honduras, researchers, archaeologists, and scholars were angry enough to write a public letter condemning the announcement. So what made them so angry? It all started when rumors stirred of a lost city in Honduras, one that had been whispered about between explorers and aviators since the 1900s. But no one seemed to have ever traveled there, turning the fabled city into legend without anyone ever seeing it. That is until 2012 when a team of archaeologists returned to the area where the city was supposedly located. Armed with high-tech equipment, they flew overhead, tracing a virtual terrain of the area. But far below in the rolling hills and sloping ridges, they spotted a basin, as well as a rectangular shape that looked distinctly man-made. After sending a team to survey the area on foot, they found 50 objects, including the carved stone they had seen from the air. Estimates placed it as originating between 1000 AD and 1400 AD, the same time the famed lost city was would have been at its most prosperous. So why all the anger about the National Geographic pieces? Other historians had worked with the local Tawaka people for decades, doing their best to share their knowledge of the area and to keep the rights and traditions of the people who still live there from being lost. The National Geographic portrayal of this so-called lost city seemed to completely ignore the fact that people had been living in the area all along, and considering them as a type of sunken treasure made their hard work to maintain their way of life seem trivial. You would think that the reveal of a previously lost city would spark interest and intrigue. Instead, it seems that nothing was lost, and instead, maybe the people of Honduras were simply ignored until explorers wanted to take credit for discovering something that was always there, had they looked hard enough. Number 8 Cat Worship Across the World Spoiling your adorable pet cat isn't just a modern practice. If you've ever had a cat, you already know how regal they can act, and why wouldn't they? The kitties we know and love were way more than just pets back in the day. But we're talking thousands of years ago, a time when human beings once worshipped cats like gods. Cat worship in ancient Egypt is one of the most popular instances we know of today. In the old city of Heliopolis, cat goddesses like Bastet, Sekhmet, and Madfet were highly revered. Each goddess helped the natives with a different need. For example, goddess Tefnut was worshipped for providing moisture to the land. It helped people with drinking water and growing their crops. Some deities were also portrayed as warriors that protected the people of ancient Egypt. The Greeks also worshipped cats and believed that the goddess Hecate had mutated into a cat while attempting to escape from Typhon's murderous rage. Hecate was the goddess of witchcraft as well as the goddess of the hunt, so while escaping, she kept a special favor for cats. As you can see, when it comes to cats, the Egyptians and Greeks had quite a bit in common. Similar to those from the West, the Chinese were also cat worshippers. In the ancient Book of Rites, a cat god named Li Xiao is mentioned. He was the guardian of families and protected the food crops that sustained life. 
Li Xiao kept pests and mice away from the crops and was especially worshipped by the farmers for his service. You can still find depictions of Li Xiao throughout China through thousands of guardian lion statues that represent the ancient cultural belief people had in Li Xiao's power as the protector of all. While the cat god did his thing in China, there was Ovinik in the Polish land. Ovinik was seen as the guardian of barns and domesticated animals. Ovinik was offered several gifts and offerings to keep him from burning down crops he was asked to protect. If you're picturing Ovinik to be a beautiful golden furball, then we're sorry to disappoint you. He was given the form of a fat black cat with piercing yellow eyes, which explains why Russians feared and despised him, even thinking he was the devil's aid. It's amazing how a cat was regarded with such a high-ranking position. Are they really that powerful? Did the rose bush in the backyard wilt away because my cat was upset with me? It makes you think. Number 7. Distance Between Sun and Earth The distance between the Sun and Earth is a complex calculation that only brilliant mathematicians can calculate. After all, you can't just pull out a measuring tape and mark the distance, right? So how was it possible for ancient civilizations to do it? Not just one, but communities across the globe made several claims and calculations with regards to celestial bodies and their positions. Some of these also coincide with real figures. They may not have been completely accurate, but without any technical help, computers, or even calculators that we have today, the feat they achieved was pretty impressive. If it wasn't for the internet, we'd have to heavily depend on our school texts for this kind of info. So let's get into the who's and what's of ancient astrophysics. People in ancient Greece were among the first to try and build a model of the cosmos. Their tool of choice? The naked eye. They thought the moon could be larger since it appeared so much closer. The sun looked to be of the same size, but was brighter. So smart as they were, they were quick to conclude that maybe the sun was larger, but much farther away. With the invention of geometry, what were once vague descriptions started turning into precise measurements. In the 2nd century BCE, astronomer Hipparchus established the use of a method known as parallax. He observed the moon from two different cities and used geometry and parallax to compute the distance to the moon. With that out of the way, another astronomer named Aristarchus tried his luck at determining the Earth's distance from the Sun. His answer was off by a few thousand increments. Much later, in the 15th century, the accurate distance was found written in a Hindu text called Hanuman Chalisa. Authored by Goswami Tulsidas, the text mentions the exact value of the distance, but it was mentioned two centuries before modern scientists calculated it. Also, Rig Veda, which is one of the most revered texts dating back to 1500 to 1000 BCE, not only gives details of the distance between the Sun and the Earth, but also the diameter of the Sun and the Moon, and several details of the planets and the solar system as a whole. Most calculations coincide with the accurate figures that we know today. Considering we are talking about quantifiable measures, it's simply unbelievable how some of the calculations made thousands of years ago line up with modern knowledge. Number 6. Early Flying Machines We all know the Wright brothers flew the first plane, but were they the first to design one? Apparently not. Flying machines, airplanes, aircraft, whatever you call it, have been mentioned in ancient relics and on cave inscriptions time and again. They might not be the same as the ones we use today, but according to this evidence, those machines could fly. One of the earliest mythological mentions is the infamous wings of Daedalus. He used tied bird feathers and sealed them together with wax to fly like a bird. Indian legends mention a flying chariot called Vimana. Known as the Chariot of Gods, there is an ancient text that solely focuses on aeronautics. The Sanskrit scripture had eight chapters talking about different theories of aeronautics, including strategies to engage in if airborne or ground attacks were to happen. Eric von Däniken was one of the critical writers who could not emphasize enough the various depictions of spacecrafts and planes from several ancient civilizations. Whether it's the pyramids of Egypt or the Moai on Eastern Island or Stonehenge, 
Though living miles away, with possibly no means of contact, all these ancient sites bear some references to flying machines. Now, whether these aircraft belong to the human race or from outer space, that's a story for a show like Ancient Aliens. Number 5. Curse of Hope Diamond When you think of cursed objects, a blue diamond doesn't really come to mind, does it? However, the Hope Diamond has time after time brought strange occurrences and events to those who own it. Curse or coincidence? You decide. Worth over $250 million, this blue-hued diamond allegedly holds a sinister curse. According to legend, it was stolen from a Hindu temple in India by a priest. He was later caught and subjected to a slow and painful death. After his death, the diamond found a new owner and was handed to a French merchant. The merchant's fate wasn't very lucky either. Soon after getting the diamond, he was mauled to death by a pack of ferocious dogs. Before his death, he sold the jewel to King Louis XIV. The diamond stayed in the king's family right until the French Revolution. If you remember your history lessons from school, you'll know that during the revolution, King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette were publicly beheaded. The diamond then trickled down many generations and misfortunes before Evelyn McLean bought it for $180,000. McLean heard of the alleged curse the stone carried, but she wasn't bothered by it at all. She would soon change her mind as her children and husband died one after the other. After the series of misfortunes and her own demise, the stone was sold to pay off her debts. In 1958, the diamond landed in the Smithsonian Institution. So maybe the curse came to an end, right? Believers of the curse don't feel so. The Smithsonian Institution is under the government of the United States. Since it was put on display there, the USA has been through a number of turmoils, from wars, race riots, to assassinations of presidents. Could it possibly all be traced back to the diamond? We may never know. What do you think? If you're enjoying our video, don't forget to give us a like, share, and also, please do subscribe to our channel for more incredible historical discoveries. Now. Back to the action. Number 4. Sundials In our modern world, we're blessed with the convenience of watches, clocks, and phones to tell time. But how did people in the past figure it out? The ancient world looked at their shadows or at the position of the sun to determine what time of day it was. Though it worked pretty well, there was still a need for something better and something more accurate. It led to the invention of the sundial, the closest ancient timekeeping device we have to the modern watch. But the remarkable part about the sundial is that it wasn't restricted to a certain community or geographical boundaries. The device was invented around the world in several cultures in a similar time frame. The earliest ones date back to ancient Egypt around 1500 BC. Around the same time, many sundials were discovered in the territory of modern Russia. The device has also been mentioned in the Old Testament as the Dial of Ahaz. In Isaiah chapter 38 verse 8, it was likely of Babylonian or Egyptian design. In the East, the story isn't any different. Sundials also existed in China, but there aren't many historical records to describe how it came into existence. They were invented in ancient China in 800 BCE and eventually transformed into water clocks by 100 AD. The Greeks also developed many forms of the sundial. They had initially derived it from the Babylonian style, but thanks to their geometrical advancements, they were able to make it even better. Astronomer Theodosius of Bithynia had allegedly invented a sundial that could be used anywhere in the world. Considering all these ancient civilizations came up with the idea around the same time, that is one big coincidence. Number 3. Winged Sun Disk Ancient symbols weren't just sketches or drawings, they held deep meaning and religious significance. Each culture and community had its own style of making those symbols, so it's truly surprising to see the same objects popping up in different centuries and geographical locations. The winged sun disk has been a common symbol in many cultures from the ancient world. It is one of the oldest symbols related to the sun and religion. You can find different variations of the sun disk across many communities, like the Sumerians, the Hittites, and the Assyrians. 
It is said to have signified omnipresence and was largely associated with the divine. The disc was also used to symbolize royalty and power in Egypt, Persia, Anatolia, and Mesopotamia. In the most common renditions in Egypt, it was depicted as a solar globe being carried on the wings of a hawk, the god Horus, along with the horns of god Amun. The winged sun disc was one of the main symbols for the main god of heaven, who was worshipped under many names in ancient Egypt. The symbol can be found carved over doorways on many temples and also Egyptian tombs. In Asia, Mesopotamia, and the Levant, the symbol appeared around the time of 2000 BC. It was considered a symbol of royalty by Assyrian rulers. The same symbol can be seen on Hebrew seals from the reign of Judah. During the times of Zoroastrian Persia, the winged sun disk was called the Farahar, which meant visual aspect of Ahura Mazda. Ahura Mazda was the supreme god in the Zoroastrianism faith. In some versions, the symbol was found to have the Egyptian symbol for the key of life on either side. Number 2. The Curse of Tutankhamun In 1992, Howard Carter, a British archaeologist, discovered the final resting place of Pharaoh Tutankhamun, or better known as King Tut. The 18-year-old pharaoh took his last breath around 1323 BC and was buried in the Valley of the Kings. Most tombs at the site had been looted and plundered, but this one was different. The tomb that Carter found was completely untouched. Carter's project was financed by the 5th Earl of Carnarvon. What lay in the tomb changed his life forever. The team found the pharaoh's mummified body along with paintings and religious objects. This huge discovery sent the entire world into a state of frenzy, and soon stories of curses started trickling in. There was no actual curse inscribed on the tomb, but the rumors were enough to send shockwaves. Things took an unfortunate turn when the Earl of Carnarvon died a few years after the discovery was made. Was it the curse or just a coincidence? But this was not the only consequence of opening the tomb. It was only the beginning. A series of misfortunes began soon after. The alleged curse victimized the Prince of Egypt, Ali Kamel Fami Bey, who was shot in 1923 by his wife. Next, it was game over for Sir Archibald Douglas Reed, whose death in 1924 was also shrouded in mystery. He had apparently taken the X-ray of the mummy. This was soon followed by the assassination of the Governor General of Sudan, Sir Lee Stack, in 1924 in Cairo. If you thought this was the end of it, you're wrong. Another member of Carter's team, Arthur Mace, died of suspicious arsenic poisoning in 1928. Carter's secretary also fell victim to the alleged curse. He was strangled in his bed in 1929. Carter's father, the very next year, committed suicide. Carter, however, dismissed the idea of the curse till his last breath. He died in 1939 of Hodgkin's disease. So, what do you think? Was Carter oblivious to the fact that he and the people around him might have been cursed to death? Do you believe in the mystery surrounding the curse and the mummy? Let us know in the comments below. Number 1. Sphinx The Great Sphinx of Giza is one of the most marvelous and recognizable wonders of the world. The 4,500-year-old giant statue draws in thousands of tourists each year. Located near the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt, this 240 feet long and 66 feet tall sphinx is touted as one of the largest monuments in the world. The image of a sphinx is instantly associated with ancient Egyptian culture, but its origins might not be so simple. The ginormous monument might be the greatest example the world has seen of a sphinx, but is it the only one of its kind? Apparently not. But what exactly is a sphinx? It is a creature that has the body of a lion and the head of a human. Though depictions of sphinxes may vary from time to time, it has been deemed as an important mythological figure in Egyptian culture. But it turns out the Asian and Greek mythologies also mention the creature. In ancient Egyptian culture, the sphinx was portrayed as a male with the headdress of a pharaoh. It was considered a spiritual guardian and statues of sphinxes were found in tombs and temples. The Sphinx Alley in Luxor, for example, is a large avenue that connects the temples of Kamak and Luxor. The alley is lined with Sphinx statues. References of the Sphinx in Asia and Greece have been found dating back to the 15th and 16th centuries. In comparison to the Egyptian structures, the Asian Sphinx was usually depicted as a female and had eagle wings. 
The creature sat on its hunches with a paw raised in the air. Similar to Asian lore, in ancient Greek traditions, the Sphinx is said to have wings. It also had the tail of a serpent. According to legends, the creature would swallow all the travelers who were not able to answer a riddle. Number 8. Sunken Russian Submarine Life for members of the Russian Navy took a treacherous turn in the year 2000 after they were involved in a shocking accident that caused the Kursk-class submarine to sink to the bottom of the Barents Sea. There were more than 100 crew members on board when the sub suffered either an explosion or a collision. The distressed crew members quickly lost all radio communications, and they spent hours tapping out messages in Morse code in a desperate attempt to get help. Things looked extremely grim for the crew, who were trapped on the seabed with no way of escaping. Rescuers scrambled to send down supplies of oxygen and water for the terrified crew, but it took an agonizing number of hours before the rescue team could get to the bottom of the sea to inspect the hull of the sub and figure out what caused the accident. Even as they were working on rescuing the crew, Russian officials remained tight-lipped about what actually happened leaving distressed loved ones of the sailors to wonder if their husbands, sons, and brothers had been injured during the accident or if they'd been killed in the accident. No one knew exactly where the accident occurred or even how long it would take for the crew to be rescued. Making matters even worse, water completely filled the torpedo holds of the submarine, which would have immediately put the lives of the crew in danger, possibly even killing them within minutes. A commander in the Russian army did leak a bit of information, though, that there were signs of the hull of the sub getting into a collision. When looking at the submarine and its 13,900-ton, 500-foot hull, you could only imagine the force of the accident that would have caused such damage. But when the rescue team finally got a look, they realized the incident was caused by an explosion, which is one of the worst-case scenarios for the crew. The only good news is that even though the submarine could carry a maximum of 24 nuclear missiles, there weren't any on board and the nuclear reactors on board had also been switched off. Even as the Russian commander remained tight-lipped, he didn't have very good news for the rescue mission, saying that the probability of a successful mission was not very high. As time wore on, it was clear that the rescue mission was going to be more of a recovery. Distraught family members gathered together, spending agonizing days waiting for news about their loved ones. Sadly, over the course of four days, crews were unsuccessful and everyone on board died. The most shocking thing is, this wasn't the first time Russian submarines have gotten into similar trouble. From 1960 to 1989, subs have either gone down after fires on board, suffered near meltdowns of their nuclear arsenal, or suffered explosions that killed crew members. The accident was a severe blow to the Russian military, but even worse, it devastated the families of the men who never came home. Number 7. Antarctica's Buried Mountains Things in Antarctica might be bigger than they seem if a new study is to be believed. Researchers were in for a shock when they uncovered evidence that a mysterious range of mountains hiding under a massive ice sheet was a lot bigger than they thought. The Gamburtsev subglacial mountains in East Antarctica are covered in over 15,000 feet of ice, making them a bit of a mystery to scientists. It has taken over 100 years of exploration in the region, but researchers think the 10,000-foot-high mountain range stretches far below what can be seen with the naked eye. Working in frigid temperatures and risking their lives and their bodies to frostbite and injury, the group of scientific explorers collected detailed images of the mountain range deep below the ice sheet using ice-penetrating radars, lasers, and magnetic and gravity meters. And what they found has stirred up controversy. The rocks nearby suggest the mountains are ancient, but they have a steep, rugged shape, usually found in younger mountains. It took further analysis of magnetic anomalies found in the rocks to prove that the Gamburtsevs match other rocks excavated around 1 billion years ago, around the time several continents and microcontinents collided and long before animals and plants appeared on Earth. This means the mountains rose upward and were sculpted by rivers and glaciers around the time dinosaurs roamed the area. As the East Antarctic ice sheet formed, covering one-tenth of the Earth's crust, it entombed the mountain range beneath the ice, preserving it. 
Next up for scientists is the task of drilling through the ice sheet to collect rock samples from the mountains. Maybe then they'll get a better picture of how the magnificent mountain range grew into the behemoth it is today. Number 6. Copper Arrowhead Sometimes it takes hard work to make a historic discovery. Other times it's just luck. For an archaeologist named Greg Hare, he was on a walk in the Yukon when he spotted something strange poking from the freshly fallen snow. When he took a closer look, he realized he was staring down at a unique weapon once used by ancient First Nations hunters. While traveling with a documentary film crew in 2016, Hare spotted a herd of caribou on what was once a site where the ancient hunters tracked the animals. Over the last 20 years, he and other archaeologists found other ancient weapons in the area, but Hare didn't expect to come across a strange antler poking from the ice. Where do you think the object came from? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below and if you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. When Hare moved in to inspect the object, he realized the antler was attached to something. After carefully removing it, the team realized it had a pointed copper arrow at the other end. One of the oldest copper elements ever found in the Yukon, caribou have been known to take refuge on the alpine ice patches, giving ancient hunters the perfect place to stalk their prey. It's also the reason why so many artifacts have been found there after the snow and ice melts. Other artifacts found nearby include hunting tools made from wood and bone. The discovery of the copper arrowhead is a first for the area and one that experts think first showed up in the Yukon around a thousand years ago. For nearly 8,000 years, hunters used throwing darts, but they made a sudden shift into using the bow and arrow to hunt. The accidental discovery of this arrowhead is an exciting one, offering a snapshot into one of the earliest examples of bow and arrows ever recovered in the Yukon. Number 5. Frozen Foxes Wondering just how cold Germany's Danube River is? Just take one look at this frozen fox and you'll get the idea. After the red fox fell into the fast-flowing river, it struggled to pull itself free, but the current was too strong and the water was too cold for the poor animal to save itself. Instead, the animal drowned and as the water froze over its body, it became completely trapped in ice. A local hunter spotted the unfortunate fox. Worried that someone might suffer the same fate, he cut free the frozen animal and put it on display in front of his family hotel, hoping others would be so horrified by the sight that they'd steer clear of the river. But if you thought this was a one-time thing, think again. In 2014, a fox fell into a similar situation when it slipped into a river in Scandinavia, not just once, but once each winter over a five-year period. What would cause these foxes to continually hurl themselves into the frigid waters? Were they so desperate for food that they would put themselves at risk? Ask the fish swimming off the coast of a Norwegian island who suffered the same fate. That's right, onlookers were stunned one winter when they spotted an entire shoal of fish frozen together underwater. Wondering how an animal can freeze so easily? It has to do with their thin skin. Some species have no tolerance to ice, so whenever they're surrounded by frigid water, the cold penetrates the fluid in their bodies and within minutes, ice fills their abdomens, encasing all their internal organs and giving them no way to escape a watery death. It's definitely not a poetic death, that's for sure. Number 4. Woolly Mammoth's Brain One good thing about permafrost, it preserves some remarkable discoveries. If it wasn't for the frozen Siberian tundra, researchers might never have had the chance to study a well-preserved woolly mammoth. Even better, when they started examining the mammoth's remains, they realized the 39,000-year-old carcass still had its brain mostly intact. The first discovery of its kind by scientists. The mammoth was between 6 and 9 years old when it died near the Laptiev Sea in Russia, which meant experts had to be very careful transporting the carcass 93 miles from the site for examination. That's when researchers could really put the specimen under the microscope. Using CT scans and MRI imaging, the scientists were stunned by what they saw. Located at the back of the brain, the animal cerebellum, which regulated the mammoth's movements. 
They also spotted the cerebrum, which is the largest part of the brain and helps regulate the animal's temperature. Being able to study the brain up close this way made for some fascinating discoveries. Experts found that the brain's structure was very similar to the brains in modern-day elephants, which makes sense since the two are related. This insight has experts wondering if mammoths also shared behavior patterns with elephants, including chasing and wrestling another for play and communicating with one another. Further study of the mammoth brain might unlock these secrets long buried under Russian permafrost. Number 3. Yellowstone Spear Researchers working in Yellowstone National Park have their hands full with so many ancient artifacts emerging from melting glaciers in recent years. As the climate changes, hidden secrets of the past are revealed. But archaeologists need to get a move on if they want to preserve these treasures and get a glimpse of how the nation's first people lived. Stunning tools, spears, and even baskets from ancient Native Americans are all items that have resurfaced in the past few years. If you thought these fascinating discoveries only came from deep under permafrost, think again. Melting ice near the surface has also recently exposed ancient trees over 5,000 years old, extinct animals, and ancient wooden weapons. Most of the time, archaeologists find stone objects when unearthing artifacts, but ice patches have a unique ability to cryogenically preserve organic material like leather, wood, textile sand, and even animal fur, giving researchers a vastly expanded idea of how ancient people in the Rocky Mountains lived. Other locations have also revealed rare insects, campsites, and fire rings from native tribes who once called the land their home. As archaeologists work at a fever pitch, they're doing everything they can to save these priceless treasures before they melt away. Number 2. Woolly Rhino Another historical find made under melting permafrost has revealed a remarkable discovery in eastern Siberia. One day, a local resident was out for a stroll when he stumbled across something bizarre poking out of the snow. When he took a closer look, he realized he was staring down at a strange carcass of an animal he didn't recognize, one with long dark fur and long horns. As soon as experts heard about the discovery, they headed to the location. There, they found one of the best preserved woolly rhino specimens ever recovered in Siberia. It lived in the late Pleistocene era between 20,000 and 50,000 years ago. Remarkably, it had most of its internal organs intact, and there were telltale signs of wear and tear on its horns, which meant it was using them for foraging and hunting. Most of its soft tissue was still visible, including part of the intestines and its genitals. Experts think the rhino was between three and four years old when it died, probably from drowning. Next to the rhino's body, the animal's small nasal horn was found, which thrilled scientists who know the horns usually decompose first. If you thought the animal was a rarity, you're partly right. They are unique, but there have also been a number of equally fascinating discoveries made in the area. Another young woolly rhino was discovered in 2014 that was about 34,000 years old when it died. Mammoths and rare cave lion cubs have also been found in parts of Siberia. As global warming melts the permafrost in Russia's extreme regions, experts believe even more historic discoveries will be made. Number 1. Austrian Soldiers one of the more gruesome discoveries made by researchers came in a small Italian town where the melting glaciers revealed the lasting remnants of war. 100 years after the start of World War I, the bodies of two Austrian soldiers were found on what's known as the Prasena Glacier in the Italian Alps. But the discovery of the bodies wasn't the most shocking thing. The blonde-haired, blue-eyed soldiers found in the small ski resort town of Bayo were naturally mummified, which also preserved the bullet holes in their heads. Experts think they fought in the White War in 1915, when Italy invaded Austria alongside the Allies. But the threat of death wasn't the only challenge soldiers faced. The bitterly cold temperatures and threats of daily avalanches also made life unbearable for the young men but it's also what played a key part in keeping their bodies intact decades after they fought and died there. The glacial cold protected their clothes, preserving their hair and skin. 
In the last few decades, more than 80 soldiers who died in the White War have been discovered, but that doesn't make it any easier for those who find them. The fact that their bodies are so well preserved makes their lifelike appearance an even more chilling discovery. It also brings up the question of whether they should be reburied or if researchers should be allowed to study the bodies for scientific purposes. Locals felt the men should be left alone and succeeded in having a number of the bodies buried in the local cemetery. Hidden for nearly a century, the casualties of war are still felt in the Alps, but at least some of these men are now laid to rest. Thanks for watching. Which of these things found in the ice did you think was the most incredible? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like these. See you next time. Bye.